This is what's happening at The Rock. Grace and peace, freedom, family, and friends. These are your weekly announcements. For the month of June, the Freedom Rock family is being challenged to be an offering, challenging us to not only talk about walking in love, but walking it out by being a blessing to someone else who is a member of this body impromptu. This is what the kingdom and the love of God is all about. LHM Media Connect is looking for members to help serve the kingdom. Contact April Morris to inquire, or if you would like to join us at 601-480-2913. Save the date and get ready for the Momentum 2K23 Pastors and Leadership Conference. It's being held from July 27th through the 29th on the campus of Freedom Rock Cathedral. Featuring Dr. Hart Ramsey, Bishop Darrell Hill, Pastor Michael Lampkin, and Darius Polk, along with five intensives on leadership, preaching, grants and finance, hospitable culture, and media and marketing. Bishop LeBaron Hedgman is the conference host and speaker. Register today at formomentum.org. We look forward to seeing you. We have resumed baby dedications here at Freedom Rock. If you desire to have your child dedicated, please contact the church office. And do not forget that the nursery has reopened. Children ages 6 months to 5 years pre-K are welcome to attend. And if you're interested in volunteering, please contact your connection team leader, Angela Whiston, for more details. The Outreach Connection Team is looking for compassionate men who have a heart after God's own heart to join the Outreach Connection Team. We need you to help serve the underserved and impoverished communities. The Outreach Connection Team meets every second Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and every third Saturday at 9 a.m. Please contact Elder Betty Cole or the church office if you are interested. Time is running out to enroll your child in the Camp Destiny Summer Enrichment Program. It's going on now and will last until July 21st. And the children will not only enjoy themselves on weekly trips, they will also learn from certified teachers in core subjects, archery, Spanish, and more. The cost is $90 per week. And if you would like to enroll your child, contact Program Director Sandra Chandler at the numbers on your screen. Mark your calendar for Freedom Rock's Rock Community Resource Center. Every third Saturday from 9 until noon, you will have access to food, toiletries, life essentials, and much more. And there is no cost because it's free at Freedom. For the month of June, the third Saturday lands on June 17th. We look forward to seeing you. Elder Betty Cole is the Outreach Director. And for more information, contact the number or email address on your screen. The Ministry of Care will meet every fourth Monday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Elder Cedric Dubos is your Connection Team Leader. Freedom family and friends, let us come together and wish Yvette Cole a happy birthday. Mrs. Cole will celebrate her birthday this Tuesday, June 13th. So happy birthday to you from all of us at Freedom Rock Cathedral. And let us also wish John and Linda Cheney a happy anniversary. The Cheneys recently celebrated 49 years of marriage back on June 2nd. So happy anniversary to you both from all of us at Freedom Rock Cathedral. You can catch Bishop Hedgeman each weekday at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM for motivational moments with Bishop LeBaron Hedgeman. The moment where positive vibes and voice prospers both decisions and the day. So do not miss out on your motivational moment each weekday at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM. So if you have a birthday, an anniversary, or you would just like to give someone a shout out, send us your email to office at frcfc.org. And for birthdays and anniversaries, make sure to list the first and last name as well as the date. These have been your weekly announcements, and we are asking you to keep all announcements in mind and be reminded that Freedom Rock Cathedral is locally committed and globally commissioned.
Grace and peace to you, beloved. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear the word of the Lord on today as we are continuing. What a powerful, invoking thought on cardiac coloration. You know, your heart matters. Your heart is everything to what flows into your life and flows through your life. Most importantly, in this year of Elroy, the year where the Lord sees, that's exactly what he sees. He sees the heart. Tune in as we're getting ready to go deeper in this thought-provoking thought concerning the coloration of our heart. Come on, at home and in the room, give him some glory. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, in order to give God glory, it requires your mouth. I said, come on, let's give God some glory. The psalmist says, open your mouth wide and God will fill it. I need somebody in the room who believe God has done something in you through communion to give them some glory. Hallelujah. No flesh can glory in his presence. Hallelujah. We give him glory, not from our flesh, but from our spirit man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just open your mouth and out of your belly. Give him a moaning and a groaning. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the almighty God, hallelujah. Why don't you just look at somebody around you and tell them, I'm so glad to see you this morning. Tell somebody else, I am so glad to see you on this morning, amen, praise the Lord. Uh, a few things I want to put in your hearing real quickly. Uh, before we go into the word of the Lord on today, uh, today is a kickoff of several things being the first of the month. Number one, it is the kickoff to Camp Destiny after school and we're so excited, praise the Lord, about the impact that we would have beginning on tomorrow for seven weeks. If you are a parent with a child attending summer camp, then we will need to see you today, Elder Cole's at four. Five, at 5 p.m. our parents and then uh, if you're working in the after school I mean in the summer camp today we will see you at 4 so we're so excited about that the trips we have planned for our attendees amen the foreign languages and arts that we're going to be able to share with them and we believe it will be seven weeks of a life-changing experience not only is it a kickoff to Camp Destiny but it is also the kickoff Amen to our June challenge, our be an offering challenge. Amen. Where we're 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 doing impromptu, amen, acts of service. Rather, it includes a gift or your time to be an offering towards others because we're discovering that the offering is not just what you have to give, it's who you are. Hallelujah. Say, I am an offering. Say, when I walk in the love of God, I am an offering to others. So this entire month, we're asking members to members. Everybody say members to members. Members to members to be an offering to someone within this congregation. At least one. God may have you to do several, but impromptu acts of love to be an offering towards them. We want to challenge you to begin to do so as we take this lesson and this series from just information to action. Also, next Sunday is Graduate Sunday. We're so excited of the class of 2023. Amen. Rather, it's preschool all the way up. We're excited about next Sunday, the word that God has given us to share with our graduates. We believe to propel them now into this new space in which they have acquired and achieved. Well, let's get ready to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to, again, um, glory to God. Our foundational scripture here, uh, as Jesus is speaking to us, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is my, okay, there we go. John 13, amen. 
We're going to look at verse 34 through verse 35. John 13, verse 34 through verse 35. Uh, Jesus says this. He says, a new commandment I give unto you. Everybody say, I've received a new commandment. Everybody say, it's a new commandment. Okay, what is it, Bishop? This is what Jesus says to us then. He says to us now, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Going forward, you've been commanded to love people the same way Jesus has loved you. He said, and as I have loved you, that ye also love one another by this alone. Not by your scripture quotation. Nor by your ha ha mm mm he kohosi. By this alone shall all men, the heathen man, the lost man, the feared man, the possessed man, the greedy man, shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love as Christ one for another. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we continue in this series on the offering. All right, the offering. Now, we're going to really understand more so today why this heart piece is so important. Romans 5 and 5 tells us that hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. So the Holy Ghost comes into our life not necessarily to, to make us deep. Okay? If deepness comes with your possession of the Holy Ghost, that's fine. But the Holy Ghost comes so that the love of God can flow through your heart unhindered. Oh my. See, uh, there is a uh, Pentecostal persuasion to this Holy Ghost thing that uh, want to limit the possession of the Holy Ghost to the utilization of gifts. Uh huh. Re re prophesying, discerning, and and casting out and, and the demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. But Jesus teaches us that the essence of the Holy Ghost is to ensure that his love can flow through us without hindrance. Which is why Paul comes to the Corinthian church and he challenges them to not just be people who are gifted, but people who have God's love in them. All right. So the need for the church and the need for the world is not just that we be gifted and full of power, but that we love differently. Because I've discovered that if you can really walk in the love of God, the love of God will condition the hearts of the other person for God's power. But who wants to be prophesied to after they've been cussed out? Oh, I wish I had some help now. Who want the same hands that stole from them to lay on them? All right? So this love thing is pivotal to our disciple walk. It's critical in this day and hour that as the church of the living God, that we walk in love. How we are to walk? And in order for this to happen, it has to happen at heart level. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. It's not a head thing. It's a what? It's not a head thing, it's a what? Heart thing. So the Holy Ghost comes to help our heart, watch this, have the proper openings, like a valve. Your heart's supposed to have the influence of the Holy Ghost to be able to open so the love of God can flow. And then when God pours in you, the valve closes for the love of God to stay. We need the Holy Ghost to do this. Amen. And this is one of his purposes. So we've been given this spectrum because when we're talking about the heart, we're helping see the heart through colors, right? Y'all been listening to cardiac coloration. We're using colors uh, that we're accustomed to to help reveal conditions of the heart. Conditions that help the love of God flow, like an open valve, or conditions that prevent the love of God from flowing, like a closed wall. Okay, And so we've been given several colors. We've dealt with the black heart that is fundamentally evil. We've dealt with the orange heart that is selfish in its nature. It seeks its own good and own kind at others' expense. We've dealt with the red heart, which is affectionate and loving, endearing. We've dealt with the blue heart, which is that of the loyal, that of the trustworthy. Well, this morning we're continuing in the pure heart. Everybody say the pure heart. Come on, say it again, the pure heart. Now, let me tell you why this is important. I hope you watched Wednesday. If you didn't, you need to go and, and watch Wednesday because you need to understand the word pure from a scriptural lens. Not from what you think it is or what you heard it, it is. You need someone to explain to you what the word pure means from the original Hebrew. 
when it was first expressed in the Old Testament, and that's what we did this past Wednesday, okay? And it's important that you have that foundation in order to be able to receive fully what we're sharing on today. Now, the pure heart, we said, uh, is one that is free from evil practices. Evil practices. Not sin, but free from evil practices. There is a difference. It is a heart that is fully devoted to God, and it seeks to please Him above all else you see the intention you see the heart you see the motive what makes the heart pure is not that someone is perfect but the essence of their heart is to please God above all else when you cut their heart open no matter what day of the week it is no matter how much money they have you can throw every kind of condition on their life sick well cold hot hungry Full, rich, poor, their intentions will be to please God above all else. The pure heart throughout the Bible is seen through many biblical characters. However, we chose to take Joseph. Joseph is a great character of one who had a pure heart. You know, his brother sold him into slavery. His brothers left him for dead. You know, Potiphar's wife lied on him, and he still found his way to the place God originally showed him in the dream. But we never see in Scripture where Joseph inflicted harm on anyone who had harmed him. He had a pure heart. Oh my God, and we're going to show, and we saw the benefits to that pure heart, and we're going to help that make a little more sense on today. Now, so well, I want you to understand uh, that the pure heart, as Elder Keith taught last Sunday on Pentecost Sunday, houses the Holy Spirit. Write that down. The pure heart houses the Holy Spirit. Now, regardless of what we desire and we want to make, make true to us, the Spirit of God has criteria. The Holy Ghost is not going to reside any and everywhere. And if you don't fix that in your thinking, you'll never improve your character. Because you feel you can do what you want to do to who you do it to, when you do it to, and, the, and still have the Holy Spirit. A life from the pits of hell. The Holy Ghost carries a criteria. Are you with me? That's, that explains the, the, the nature of God. God accepted Abel's offering. He rejected Cain. Because God, his nature, his spirit has a criteria. David said, create in me a clean heart. Watch this. And then renew in me a right spirit. This right spirit, watch this, will not be housed in a heart that's not clean. Oh, he would have just said, God, renewing me a right spirit. But first, he said, creating me a, then renewing me a right spirit because the spirit of God has criteria and he does not reside anywhere. This pure heart teaching is very necessitous to us because we need the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, in the seasons to come in your life, the next couple of years of your life, you need the Holy Ghost in order to get there. Wherever your there may be, your neighbor has a there. Somebody sitting behind you has a there. Somebody's watching me have a there. But you won't get there without the Holy Ghost. So the pure heart is not a heart that certain people possess who have special privileges from God as though they were created genetically with an advantage. No, 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 don't think that way, that, that, oh, they have a pure heart because, oh, they had a grandmother that prayed, oh, they got a pure heart because, oh, they had both parents in their homes, oh, they got a pure heart because God just favored them. No, a pure heart is not a gift. Whew. Uh, Y'all going to make me work. I'm, I'm working through some misunderstandings. A pure heart is not a gift. Say that with me. A pure heart is not a gift. Okay? So a pure, a pure heart is not given to people who were created with a specialty at birth. Hear this. A pure heart is a heart in, that belongs to those in whom, watch this, they have allowed God to reposition their heart. The pure heart is the result of God's repositioning. 
Yeah, see, uh, how many of you had some things that you loved before you got saved that now that you are saved, you can't love it like that anymore? You got at least one thing. Come on, wave your hands in the air and wave your... I got something I used to love that since I've been born again, I can't love it like that anymore. Okay, you, you, you with me on that? What happened when you got saved, when you began to grow in the word of God? Watch this. I'm going to say this throughout this teaching. When you know, when you are not just a church goer, but a word doer, not just a church goer, but a word doer, what happened was God repositioned your heart concerning that thing. Yeah, you loved it. You enjoyed it. But now your love for God, and when you discover that God didn't love it, you chose to love God more than you loved that. So you have a pure heart concerning that because God has repositioned your heart. God has repositioned your heart. The pure heart is the heart that God has repositioned. Not only is the heart that God has repositioned, but it's the, it's the heart that belongs to those, hear this, who takes their heart posture seriously the pure heart belongs to those who takes their heart posture towards God seriously they take their heart posture towards God seriously so there's some things they refuse to entertain because it will mess up my heart posture like unforgiveness I said this before, people don't forgive because they feel like forgiving. They forgive because they understand unforgiveness messes up my heart posture towards God. And people who have a pure heart are people who take their heart posture towards God seriously. And it is the heart that has been repositioned by God. I said Wednesday, when you hear pure heart, you, many people hear pure and pure heart and they think sinless. That's wrong. When the Bible talks about being pure and pure of heart, he's not talking about being sinless. That's why you need to listen to Wednesday's teaching. Pure means God full, not sinless. God full, full of God. Pure as in full of God, not necessarily sinless. You can have a pure heart and still sin, okay? That's why repentance and confession are New Testament practices. Why? Because they keep the heart pure beyond sin. Now, the practice of sin and a pure heart is something totally different. That's why in the description of the pure heart, it said that a pure heart are those, watch this, who have been freed from the evil practices of sin, not necessarily sinning. There are some good people. What did I just say? There are some good people whose pure heart continues to become impure. There are some good people whose pure heart continues to become impure because they don't know how to a suffer long if you don't know how to suffer long which is a decision your pure heart will become impure not only do they not know how to suffer long, we're going to give them credit. We're going to call it ignorance, but a lot of this is willful intention. People just don't want to go through nothing. Yeah, and when they get tired, they quit on what God said, right? Let's call it what it is, but we're going to be nice and act as though it's ignorance. So we're going to say they don't know how to. A, suffer long. B, trust God. Oh, yeah, after this morning, your whole idea of this trust in God would be different. We're going to see how God looks at that. And then number three, they don't know how to cultivate heart cleansing. How to cultivate heart cleansing. So there are good people, we said, whose pure heart becomes impure because they don't know how to do three things. What was the first one? Suffer long. What was the second one? Trust God. What was the third one? H cultivate heart cleansing. That's right. Now listen to this. 
Uh, we said the coloration of one's heart is improved by understanding. As you grow in your understanding, as you grow and discover new understandings, as you grow deeper in understandings, the coloration of your heart changes for the better. All right? There's a correlation between no understanding, wrong understanding, and darkness. Ignorance associated with darkness. As light and understanding comes into our heart, as we allow God to change the way we think and how we see, our heart is made better. All right? Now, there, there, there's something in understanding that's called enlightenment. What was the word I just said? Enlightenment. When enlightenment happens, listen to me closely, enlightenment means something has been connected. All right? A connection. All right? And, and so I have understanding, and then I can go deeper in my understanding and be enlightened, which now allows me to connect. We connect words with definitions, right? In order to gain an understanding. That's one thing of connection. Words with definitions. But did you know that the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the most intelligent being given to us, desires that we also connect understandings? See, when you're able to connect I un this thing that I understand to that thing I understand, now I've been enlightened. All right? See, I understood at a point growing up in faith, faith. I was taught faith, how to believe God, how to believe God no matter what I see. Faith has to do with my ability to comprehend the will of God. It goes beyond the sensual realm. Sometimes walking by faith doesn't make eyesight sense, doesn't make hearing sense, okay? But faith pleases God. Well, as I matured, I then began to understand that I had uh, an understanding of faith, but faith couldn't work for me because I didn't understand the works piece. Because I was sitting there believing and waiting on God. When really I grew to understand that there is a thing called dead faith. Faith without works is dead faith. But faith comes alive when not just you believe, but when you bring works, a corresponding action along with what you're believing. So I was believing God for financial increase as a husband with a family with a very low income, making $24,000 a year. God gave me a plan to start sowing the entire year of 2004. And I, I committed to sowing a particular amount throughout that year. What am I doing? I had an understanding of faith, but in 2004, God began to bring with that understanding of faith an understanding of works. You desire increase, what's your corresponding action? I was enlightened because now my understanding of faith is coupled with my understanding of works. Oh, I want to lose weight. Oh, yeah, I got scriptures. Bodily exercise, probably little. Shake up a wire. And I'm just still saying it, but still eating the same. Still saying it, I ain't walking at all. Still saying it, going every call. You want to go out there? Yeah, I'm going to meet you there. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an extra. Put a little more on there. Appetizer two and dessert. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, I'm just. But bodily exercise. That's, that's faith, but no works. But when I began to go to the gym, when you began to increase your water intake, when you begin to cut back on your sweets and your fried foods, when you begin to put yourself on some form of consequence, Consecration, even though we're not corporately, you're bringing works along with your faith. Now you're walking as someone who has been enlightened because you understand faith and you understand works. Well, this morning we're going to be enlightened because we're going to understand the connection between a pure heart and favor. A lot of people have working Standing revelation on a pure heart. And a lot of people have insightful, biblical, scriptural understanding and revelation on favor. But today God wants you to be enlightened. Oh, somebody should have said glory right there. Because God wants you now to connect having a pure heart to living with the favor of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8. Glory to God. That's why. 
people, that's why people with a pure heart are oftentimes people that people say, oh, you're just going to let folk take advantage of you. Oh, you're going to sit there and play dumb. Oh, you're going to, but they have a revelation. Glory to God. They got an understanding. Oh, my. That, yeah, it looks like they're getting, they getting away. That it, they are not my problem. My problem is my heart posture because I refuse to allow, watch this, revenge, retaliation, and rivaling for rivaling to mess up this favor that God has on your life. I need you to look at somebody and tell them no enemy is worth God's favor on your life. I feel God right there. You need to look at somebody and tell them no enemy is worth God's favor that's on your life. And when you got a revelation of favor, you will continue to do right and be pure and folk think you dumb. You ain't dumb. You see clearly. But what God is doing for you and what God is getting ready to do for you is worth way more than coming down on a level. See, you can't live in this space without an understanding. Shouting won't get you here. You need revelation. Matthew 5 and 8 says, blessed happy watch this enviably fortunate oh i love that expression you so fortunate that folk envy your fortune ah jesus let that rest in your spirit god's trying to move your life to the place where you become enviably fortunate somebody ought to shout i receive and spiritually prosperous Possessing, watch this, the happiness that's only produced through the experience of God's favor. Let me help you. I want to set your expectation because maybe you've never experienced it. But let me help you. God ex and ex experiencing God's favor will make you happy. <laughs> Having an experience with God's favor will make you happy. Oh my God. Oh God. I don't know if you've been there, but oh my, when you, when you, when you come to a place and you see that the favor of God, Elroy has already saw to it. Oh God. It'll make you happy. When you saw that thing going downward and you was given all of your energy and effort and it was beyond what you was capable of doing but God's favor turn that thing around that experience will make you happy and it says especially watch this conditioned by the revelation of his grace See, there's a connection between people with a pure heart and people who have a revelation of his grace. A revelation of his grace. So when they're doing all of the ungodly things under the table to get ahead and to get money, but you refuse to get your hands dirty, see, you understand you got a revelation of grace that God will favor you. Hallelujah. You ain't got to be evil, corrupt, wrong and manipulative to get what God has for you and they don't understand we did it and didn't get caught we did it again and didn't get caught it's working for us and didn't get caught why you won't do it because I got a revelation of grace and that revelation won't allow me it won't allow you to compromise your pureness he says regardless of the outward conditions that means everybody else could be falling Everything everywhere else can be drying up. But the pure hearted understand that even though outward conditions, even though the meteorologists read that this is the season we're in, when you, are, when you have a revelation of grace, you understand that the favor of God will make an exception for you. Hallelujah. And why it's drying up everywhere else, it's overflowing for you. Because there is a connection between a pure heart and the favor of God. 
He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See God. They will see his favor. Let me say it to you this way. He's saying they will see God come through for them. Somebody just missed that. But that's what they need to hear in this season. So convey what I just conveyed to you, to your neighbor. Tell them, say, neighbor. The promise is to the pure in heart that God will come through for you. The pure heart is the heart God chooses to defend. It's the one God won't allow to be bullied. It's the one that God will step in and say, that's enough now. The pure heart is the heart that God takes personal. When you got a pure heart, you got the favor of the Lord on your life. I dare you to lift up both of your hands and declare I have the favor of the Lord on my life. I said declare it, I have the favor. That's why you're excited. Woo! That's why your head ain't down. That's why your chin is up. Cause you got the Somebody give God a shout for favor. Now watch this. Hold it right there, Fox, because I gotta, I gotta prophesy some here in just a moment. Let's go, let's go to, let's go to Psalm 73 and 1. Psalm 73 and 1. There is a connection. You're being enlightened. There's a connection between a pure heart and the favor of God. So whenever people rather be people you can to, people you work with, people you live with. Whenever you allow people to pull you into a place of contamination of heart, you are compromising God's favor on your life. You can't get back at everybody and be favored. You see the long suffering now? You got to choose. You've got to reason. You got a way out, which is more greater, which is of the most importance. You getting your sibling told and letting them know, and now y'all ain't talking for two weeks, or keeping what's richly flowing in your life alive. I don't know about you, but I believe a hundred times out of a hundred, I choose favor. You ain't got time to be silly and childish and messy. You can't mess up what's on your life because you're being enlightened. There's a correlation, there's a connection between a pure heart and the favor of God. See, when God has favored you, God allows you, watch this, to be governed by that which is no longer earthly. See, when the favor of God is on your life, time is no longer something that can hinder you. See, it don't matter if you're 90 when you're favored. Where, where's Sarah at? You need a witness? It don't matter if you're 100 when you're favored. It don't matter what you don't have when you're favored. Gideon defeated with, with, with a third of what he thought he had to have because he was favored. You want favor. The Bible says, truly, I love that first word. Come on, shout it. Truly. One more time. Truly. Shout it like you're a preacher. Truly. Truly. <laughs> truly, God is only good to Israel, even to those who are upright and pure in heart. Truly God is only good to those who are upright and pure in heart. There is a side of God that you release to your life when your heart is pure. There is a side of God you'll never see. You can sing all the songs. You can quote all the scriptures. You cannot miss a service. But if your heart is impure, there's a side of God's goodness you'll never see. 
And it'll make you envious of other people, jealous of other people, because you see them going to church with you. You see them worshiping with you. You see them walking to the sanctuary with you. But what you don't see is their heart posture towards God. Hey, and so there's a goodness of God you can't have because your heart ain't pure and you need a real man of God that'll stand before you and help you understand you can have that, but it's going to require this. You'll never see the goodness of God without the pureness of heart. It'll be foreign to you. You'll still be gambling, playing games. Oh, I'm going to shout this time, see if it happened. Oh, I'm going to sow this time, see if it happened. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm try to impress them to see if it happened. You ain't got to play no games when your heart pure. <laughs> Woo! Hey, how about God to honor everything you do. Whether it's a shout, whether it's a C, whether it's a D, God will honor it because he's truly good to those whose heart is pure. Truly good. What is he? What is he? In 2023, what is he? Right now in your life, what is he? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you don't have, no matter how ugly it gets, and no matter how ugly it looks, God will truly be good to you. If you're upright, and if your heart is pure. Jesus, your problem, you won't respect, but you don't want to have a pure heart. See, when your heart is pure, God said he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. Oh, God, you want to control some contaminated. Oh, I feel God now. I feel God now. But you got to bring your heart to the altar of God. You got to take your pride for self in your secret closet and ask God to examine me. Purify my heart. Because what you're trying to do through muscle can come freely through favor. I said, what you trying to do through muscle can come freely through favor. Preach, Bishop. What you trying to obtain through labor will come freely through favor. What you trying to clock in and clock out for will flow freely to you through favor. God said to the pure in heart, whew, he told me to prophesy these three things to the pure in heart today. Oh, she, Hana, Hana, Ekavabahaya, see. Hey, Elijah said, Ezekiel said in the valley of dry bones that he prophesied as he was commanded. And in prayer, God commanded me to release these things in the atmosphere to those who are of a pure heart. Now, if your heart is pure, you receive these things as final confirmation. Because what I'm going to share with you, God has already said to you privately. To those who don't have a pure heart, this is your motivation. Ah, yeah, to get your heart right before God so that these things can come alive for you. First thing the Spirit of the Lord says, God said that he would, he, he's going to give favor to the pure in heart. He said he's going to give favor to your need. God says he's about to favor your need and the spirit of God began to be even more clearer and he says one or some of you two of your deepest needs God said I'm going to favor your needs in other words you're still wrestling with what does that mean let me help you when God favors your needs this word or these, this expression becomes your new truth, which is, I don't need that anymore. It's no longer a need of mine. I need somebody, glory to God, who feels the anointing of the Spirit of God to put in the atmosphere, you know what you need, and say that is no longer a need of mine. Woo! Shaka! Come on, say that is no longer a need of mine. Because God, to the pure in heart, is about to favor your need. 
And whenever God gives favor to your need, it is no longer a need. Somebody go ahead and declare and say, I don't need it anymore. Hey, glory to God. Say, it's no longer a need of mine. I feel all now. Say, my need list is changing. Because God is about to favor your need. I need you to just touch somebody and say, God's ready to favor your need. Whether it's mental, whether it's conditional, whether it's in your child, if it's in your bank, if it's in your body, the Spirit of the Lord says, God is about to I hear that for somebody. You don't need a building anymore. You don't need an executive assistant anymore. You don't need an attorney anymore because God is about to favor your deepest need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You won't pray about that again. Hey. All right. Number two. Number two. To the pure in heart. God said prophesy these things to them. Number two, the Spirit of God says, watch this, that God is going to favor your decision to change. God says he's going to grace that changed version of you. He's going to favor your decision to change. Some of you, you've been already able to imagine what you should be. Oh, I'm your man of God. You, you've already imagined the kind of husband you should be. The kind of lover you should be. The, the, the kind of giver you should be. The kind of helper you should be. The kind of friend you should be. And God said he's going to Favor your decision to change because he's going to grace that changed version of you. He said because he receives your change as worship. In other words, God said greater than any song you could sing. Greater than any medley you could hum. Oh God, your change. The changed version of you. He said, I receive it as worship. And I'm going to give grace and favor to that changed version of you. Oh, glory to God. Everybody say, the changed version of me. Come on, say it again. The changed version of me. I haven't even got to the next color yet. But, if, but see, if you're through evolving, you have left God. Because anything that still has the nature, breath of God in it, continues to evolve till he returns. So if you don't have a need for a greater version of you, you've left God. Your soul is in jeopardy and not ready for the coming of the Lord. We all should be in pursuit of a greater version of ourselves. And God said to the pure in heart, he said, and when he said grace you, grace that verse, he said, I'm going to help you become that. You say, well, there's a lot of things I don't know. A lot of trainings I don't have. I wasn't raised around this. I don't know nobody that can help me with this. I don't know if they dealt with that. I don't know if they suffer from this. He said, just keep your heart pure. Because I'm going to grace the changed version of you. And grace will make up for what was lacking. Oh, 
my God. It takes nothing away from study. It takes nothing away from the proper methods of becoming and becoming legitimate and, and becoming informed. I'm not preaching a shortcut gospel, but I am saying when your heart is pure and when you're going after with all of your heart, God full, what God wants for you, God will grace you. And grace will make up for what you don't have within your own means. Third thing to the pure in heart, God said prophesy to them. There's a connection between pure heart and favor. He says, I'm also, he said, listen to this. He says, I'm going to favor the next deal. To the pure in heart, God said, I'm going to favor the next deal. God said to the pure in heart, I'm going to favor the next deal. And God said, I need you to, I need you to clarify this to them that it's not necessarily the very next deal that comes their way. He said, it, 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 it's not next as in the very next thing you try. He said, but within the series of deals that are about to come to you, in one of those is the next deal. Notice it's not a deal, it's the deal. In other words, there are some things and opportunities, glory to God, that are about to flow your way in these next months and, and in this next upcoming year, but in them it's not a deal, but the deal that God has favored. As a result of your pure heart. And God says, he says, I'm going to favor the next deal. He said, and it's going to create liberties. Mm -hmm. This next deal, when this thing comes to pass, God said, it's going to create liberties for the next phase of your life. You better know when the Spirit of God is talking. He said, it will create liberties for the next phase phase of your life. In other words, I'm going to favor this deal so to the pure in heart. Watch this. And it's going to create liberties where when this thing come to pass, listen to what God said, you will be free to do. He says to some of you, you're going to be free to make good. There are some things that was in your heart to do that you could not do. There were some commitments you made that you ran out of means. But God said, I'm going to favor this next deal so you'll be able to go back, I feel God now, and make good on some things. These liberties are going to come so you will be free to serve in the kingdom. I'm going to favor this next deal so you will have liberties to be free to serve in the kingdom. And he said, all I ask of you, all I command of you is a pure heart. Because there's a connection between a pure heart and the favor of God. I'm only halfway through with my message. I have to finish it Wednesday. Come on, let's give God glory for what we've heard tonight, this morning. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a worship, there's a glory that has to come out of your lips. Come on, come on. To the pure in heart, honor the Lord. That's right. I'm sowing into that word. I see you. Come on, let's honor the Lord all over the room. Come on. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your hands. Honor the Lord. Come on. The pure heart has an outstretched hand. The pure heart has an open mouth. The pure heart has a worship. Come on, that's right. Keep it going. 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 While we're worshiping. You may be in this place and you need to be saved. You need to come now. You may need to repent. Salvation belongs to you. Jesus loves you. He desires to save you. And if he once saved you but you left him, he still longs for a relationship with you. Out of all the believers that's in the bosom of God, there's still an opening because you left. Nobody can take your place in the bosom of God. Either you choose to not return or you do return to that place. But this altar is open even to those who are watching for you to return back to the bosom of God, the family of God. 
you got to realize when your spiritual walk is the problem to everything going on in your life. You don't need more friends. You think you need more money. No, you need to get right with God. So favor can serve you. And this is an opportunity for you to get right with God. It ain't about what people think. It ain't about what they say. He loves you. And he created you with a need for him. The only problem is that he refuses to share first position. And so when you come back to God, what you're doing is you're, you're putting him back in first position. When you repent, you're putting him back in first position. Because God said, I'll never be second. I'll never settle for fourth. I just won't deal with you until you're ready to make me first. Because I am the Lord and I'm a jealous God. And I refuse to share first position. Sometimes we made things first in our life. We made stuff first in our life. We made revenge first in our life. We made anger first in our life. We made money first in our life. This is an opportunity for you to make God first in your life. Repent. Return to Him so that your heart can be made pure. Thank you, Father. I pray that if there are any watching who desire to return to you, Father, that you forgive them now of their sins that the blood of your dear son reaches them. Father, that they repent and that they bring their life under a taught word, that they submit their life to some spiritual authority so that they can complete their earthen assignment awaiting to see you and receive that crown of glory that you've promised to them that are righteous. We thank you that those souls now have been saved those repented hearts, glory to God, and confessed sins have been forgiven. And we give you praise, God, that we believe by faith now the journey towards living with a pure heart has begun. It's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus we pray, and we agree, amen. If you want to join this church, you can come now. If you're in this place today in person or if you're watching, you can go check the uh, online membership, e-membership if you're in person. You can come today. We'll gladly receive you. We believe that this is the kind of family, faith, and fellowship you need in order to live a life in the earth that's pleasing to God. I could not live a life pleasing to God and not be churched. I don't see how people do it. I couldn't do it without a church family. I couldn't do it as a pastor without a pastor. We need each other, and we're better together. Well, we thank God today for the word that was planted. He was blessed. Come on, give God praise for the word. We're getting ready to go to bless Kurt, bless uh, Fred Hammond. We're getting ready to give. Amen. Hallelujah. Any cheerful givers in the house? Come on, if you're a cheerful giver, why don't you give God a shout? You blessed and you know you're blessed. You're blessed because God has blessed you. Well, come on, prepare your gifts. You're tired, you're offering your seed as we prepare. Come on, get it together. Glory to God. Will everybody say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Say we're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. For the devil is, is we are, come on, say it again. Will everybody say bless, 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 bless. Tell your neighbor, you're blessed, bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Say we're blessed. We're blessed. Sickness and poverty. For the devil lives. We are. Let's say this part. Listen, hey. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's about to work in your favor. Come on. Everybody say late. late in the My God, God's gonna it's going to work. It's gonna work in your 
One more time. Hey, hey. Somebody say, lay, lay, lay. I got. Come on, turn around. And 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 around. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Come on, let's get ready to give. The Bible says in Luke 6 and 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Many times we want to change that. We want to say fast, and it shall be given to you. Shout, and it shall be given unto you. But God revives the economic system of our life through giving. He said when you give, my system responds to your giving and now calls to be given back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. As we give today, we stimulate economic revival. We cause God's system to respond to us. As you have your gift ready, let's say it as I tithe faithfully and so continually. Lord, we thank you. That increase is flowing into my life from multiple directions. Every stream of income you have ordained is flowing into my life. Streams of compensation, streams of investment, streams of inheritance, and streams of harvest. Therefore, I am blessed. You got to mean it. Say, therefore, I am blessed. My family is blessed. My church family is blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let every cheerful giver give God a shout. If you were blessed by the word, go ahead and give God another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. What a word from heaven on today. We thank God for Bishop Hedgeman and the word that he has sown. We pray now that God will revive him a hundredfold for the efforts and the sacrifice to hear from heaven. It's expensive to be before God to hear word from heaven. So we pray now God pours back into him a hundredfold. God, we thank you so much for a powerful word on today. Man, Bishop just ministers so many amazing things today. I pray that that word is seasoning your heart. He let us know that the pure heart belongs to those who allows God to reposition it. We got to let God change this heart of ours so that we can have the pure heart. Because the pure heart qualifies me for God's favor. And I can tell you from life experiences that there's nothing. Nothing more important to me than staying under the favor of God. What my benefits couldn't do, what my bank account couldn't do, what my friends couldn't do, what the folks who knew me couldn't do, favor made it happen. You might as well get in line. Favor is real. We want to now recognize, go ahead and take a seat, have a seat so we can recognize now. If you're with us for the first time on today, you are a guest worshiping with us, be it online or in person. We just ask that you please stand or if you're online, put it in the chat. Let us know where you're watching us from so we can honor you for your presence on today. Any guests with us here? What? What? Here we go. Glory to God. Let us go ahead and honor our guests. Freedom. Give them a high five, dap them up, let them know we thank God. We appreciate you for being here. We believe that you're visiting the greatest church on this side of heaven here at Freedom Rock on today. We're preparing to get ready to go. Let us get ready to stand so we can get ready to go before the presence of the Lord as we will leave this sanctuary. Father, we thank you so much now for your word, God. For you declare, God, that you exalted your word even above your name. God, so for as much as we value your name, God, you say you value your word even the more. So we thank you now that we apply that which we have heard, God, and favor finds its way into and upon our lives in amazing ways, God. Oh, God, we're going to rejoice in this portion that you are releasing to us and through us on today. God, we pray now that as we leave this place, we dare not leave your presence. Let your covering cover us even as we leave. Favor our vehicles. Favor our homes, God. Favor the 
the activities of our limbs, God. Allow this week to be a blessed week for us, God. Let nothing we put our hands to be done, God, without excellence or done in a way that pleases you. Daddy, we love you. We thank you for loving us beyond all imagination. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. My, I pray you was blessed and I pray you were enlightened, meaning that you were able to connect understandings, the understanding of the favor of God to now the understanding of a pure heart. And I pray you begin to align your life as such and watch God favor you. Listen, don't forget our be an offering challenge impromptu being a blessing to other people as an offering to them. I'm looking forward to hearing the testimonies. And I believe this week will be a great week for you. Until next time, I'll see you then.